afternoon and welcome to mmlearn.org at Morningside Ministries. My name is Tracy Zirkel. I am an employee of Morningside Ministries and I'm also a lead trainer for a national program called A Matter of Balance, Managing Your Concerns About Falls. My name is Tracy Zirkel. I've had um, the great opportunity to talk with many older adults about falls and the fear of falling, and I hope that today um, we can all have a discussion and be better communicators about falls, because we know that falls are a very serious problem. Um, we have many programs about fall prevention, and I encourage you to go look at them um, and see that information. But one of the things that you may not know is that many people don't report their falls. And if you don't report your falls to your physician or to a family member or you hide the fact that you're having falls, that in itself can lead to a higher risk of future falls. And we just encourage you to um, utilize the information that you're going to learn here today and learn to have that discussion because it will help save you in the future. No one wants to fall. Now here's an important note, and if you only take one thing from today's presentation, I hope this is it. There are reasons that people fall, and being old is not one of those reasons. Falling down is not a part of the normal aging process. We're going to talk a little bit about what causes falls, but I want you to know that falling is not something you have to deal with. There's a solution. Now, here are the better known reasons for falls. Medications, we can have medication interactions, muscle weakness. Sometimes um, we don't move around as much as we did when we were younger and our muscles become weak and not able to support us. Perhaps a lack of flexibility in the heel cord, the hamstrings, the hip flexors. Sometimes even in our neck and a bad posture can lead us to more falls. And then there are vision issues that of course can lead to those falls, and then environmental factors, uneven sidewalks, pets, throw rugs, those type of things. But did you know that the fear of falling in itself is a risk factor for falls? In fact, it was published in the British Medical Journal in August of 2010 that the fear of falling or even the perceived fear of falling could, in fact, increase one's risk to fall in the future. So we need to address that fear. A healthy concern is okay, but fear is not okay because that can lead us to restricting our activities, restricting the way we socialize, and can actually lead to an increased risk of falls. Also, not reporting a fall. Remember, falls have a reason, and we just discussed a few of those, and your physician should have a, a checklist that he or she will go through you if you have a fall and, and make sure it's not a medication interaction or you're not dehydrated or that maybe you need a special physical activity program. But if you don't report those things, you won't find out why you're falling. And then not being assertive. When you need help or if you need an assisted device or you just need to hold somebody's arm in a crowd, if you don't ask for that help, you're not going to receive it. And if you don't get the help you need, that could lead to a future fall. And then, of course, we talk about not asking for help. We're very prideful people, and it's hard to ask for help, but because to us, that's an admittance of weakness. But in fact, if you are asked for help by someone who needs your help, most folks will give that help willingly and happily, and it really adds a certain um, kindness to our life. So if you don't ask for help, you're robbing someone of the blessing of giving help and, and help assisting in another one's life. So keep that in mind when you're um, not wanting to ask for help. Well, these two lovely people are my mom and dad, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my story and the things that I have learned over the past few years. Um, in my career, I am a facilitator or trainer for several evidence-based programs. 
And those are programs that have gone through clinical research, and now they're community-based research. And most of them are geared towards older adults and dealing with chronic conditions or becoming more physically active or fall prevention or even exercise. And through my learnings, I thought that I sort of knew it all, and I thought I was going to help my parents be more healthy. And so I sort of rode them pretty hard. And if they were sick, I would make sure I went down and make sure they take their medicine and drink fluids, and I would nag them about exercising and blood pressure and cholesterol until I began to hear the people in my classes talk about how they felt about their children that did the same thing that I did. And some of the folks in my class would tell me, I can't talk to my kids about falls because they'll put me in a nursing home. Or I'm afraid to tell my daughter that I've been diagnosed with diabetes because she'll change everything I do or she'll be disappointed in me or she'll nag me. And this started to sink in that I was doing the same thing that I was helping these folks communicate with their, with their kids, but I was doing the same thing to my parents. And I began to notice that I wasn't finding out if my parents had a fall. I wasn't finding out if they had health issues because they weren't talking to me anymore about that. And so I want to publicly apologize to my parents. And I have been working on that. And now I just want them to enjoy their life. And I do want them to rely on me, but I also recognize a couple of things, and, and let's talk about that relationship. First of all, I need to remember to honor my parents and recognize that I'm still their child, and they're still the parent. And this is how I think about that. When my mom and dad look at me, they probably see me in a diaper. I know that sounds silly, but truly, I'm their baby. And when the baby decides to become the parent and tries to switch into that role, it's never very successful. And it's not my role. It is my role to care about and love my parents and help them when I can, but I can't become their parent. That's not how it works. So in having the conversation or getting ready for the conversation, really internally, you need to remember these are the folks that held your hand when you were little, that dried your tears, that kissed your boo-boos. And you have to, to think about that and how they think of you. And then always acknowledge your past mistakes. And if necessary, apologize for those mistakes. And here are some tips about having the conversation. It's frustrating when we can't help someone, especially if our parents are having failing health or if they're having falls or if we know that there's a fall risk, it's so frustrating not to be able to fix that. And sometimes we get sort of judgmental. So you want to avoid the you are having falls and you are not doing anything about it and you won't throw your throw rugs away and so forth because that's accusatory and it really puts people on the defensive. The best way, I think, to go about that is to talk about the I message or, or how you feel and say, you know, I am worried about you and I don't know what to do about it. And I just want to have some peace knowing that you're okay. And what can we do to help that along? And remember to ask how. How can I help? Um, not asking why. Well, why don't you do what the doctor tells you? Or why aren't you putting that dog in with a neighbor so it doesn't trip you? Or why won't you exercise? Or things like those. Those are all put folks on the defensive. So asking, well, how can I help you? And sometimes you may not be able to help and, ex and accept that. But if you are able to help, then there are some we messages that you can give. If you live close enough to your loved one, perhaps you could go on walks together. Perhaps you could visit the physician together or go to that fall prevention class in your community together, and we'll give you more information about that as we go on. And then <clears throat> acting on the outcome. Remember 
just because you've had the conversation and just because your parents or your loved one or the person you're caring for is doing all the right things, falls can still happen. They happen, but we have to learn that most of them are preventable. So we have to be kind and not accusatory when things happen that are out of our control. And then offer your help, but don't expect it to be accepted because it may not be, and, and sometimes that's okay. And follow up, but try not to nag. Try not to make all your conversations be about false. Enjoy life and enjoy your conversations together. Don't make them all about health because that can be uncomfortable at best. Now, I noticed that I have some questions here, and I'm going to stop for just a minute and answer a couple of those that I think are appropriate. And let's go back one slide. What if I don't have a family member to talk to? Sometimes this is the case, and it is important to talk about falls. The best thing to talk to is to talk to your physician or your health care provider or a friend or even a minister can help. Sometimes just talking about your fear, getting it out in the open, and having a more objective viewpoint can help you quite a bit. So I encourage you to find someone to confide in. Even if you have to call a helpline, 211 is available in most communities, and you can usually get help from your area agency on aging. And at the end of the program, we'll give you information on how to contact those. But do talk to someone, even if you don't have a loved one close. And I'm going to hold off on these um, and answer them in just a little bit. Now, from the older adult perspective, and I'm not an older adult yet, um, but these are some things that I hope are some take-homes if you are having trouble talking with your family or doctor or loved ones about your fear of falling, if you've perhaps been hiding falls. There are some misperceptions out there, and hopefully um, we can talk a little about, about those. First of all, as an individual, you have a lot more control than you might think. The premise that if you report a fall to your doctor or you report a fall to a family member that they will place you in a nursing home is quite frankly false. We can't just commit our loved ones to an institution. It does not work that way. And we know and physicians know and healthcare professionals know that people live longer and more happily and more healthy in their own homes. So your physician will take the time to make sure that you can age in place. And if you are having falls, talk to your doctor about that and create a good relationship with your provider. And when I say provider, I mean many things. The front office staff in the physician's office. Make friends with them. Get to know them. Let them get to know you. The nurses, the medical assistants, the physician assistants and your physician. Remember, your physician has a very um, specific role in your health care, and that is to diagnose and treat. There are other players in the health care system that can really help get involved and help you overcome some problems. So create those good relationships with your health care provider. And remember, you're the consumer. Your physician is not chosen for you. You choose your physician. And if your physician tells you that you're having falls because you're old, you fire them and find a physician who will work with you to get to the bottom of that fall cause because there is a reason and it's not because you're old. So be assertive in that. And then there are some steps that you need to take to prevent falls. Before I get there, I'm going to address this question. What if my doctor won't listen? Well, physicians are human beings. They aren't robots, and many of them have personalities, and some of their personalities are good and some are not good. If you find that you cannot have a conversation with your doctor, and here are some things that you might think about. When you make your doctor's appointment, make sure you tell the scheduler that you want to talk to your doctor about your fear of falling or about fall prevention so that they're not just coming in to do a blood pressure check or something like that, so they know why you're there. Then write down some questions to ask your doctor while you're visiting with him. And this is so important. 
when the doctor opens up the door and says, good morning, how are you? Don't say fine. It's not a social question. He really wants to know or she really wants to know, how are you doing today? Why are you here? And they have a very small amount of time to get to the bottom of it. So what you should say is come right out and tell them why you're there. And then you can have pleasantries later. And be kind to your doctor. They're busy. They've gotten into this industry to help people, but you're the key to help them help you. So here are some steps to prevent falls. Find a fall prevention or exercise class in your community. Remember we said that muscle weakness was one of the reasons that people fall? You don't have to have a specific fall prevention program. Any exercise class will truly work. Now, where can you find good fall prevention exercises? One of the links that I didn't put on the slides, but I will when this is over and put it up for the update, <clears throat> is the National Institute of Aging. It's www.nia.gov. We'll put that up for you after. They have a wonderful book that you can order that shows you exactly the exercises that older adults should be doing, and we'll put that on as a link. You can also contact your local area agency on aging, and we have put up the link at the end of the presentation for the National Association Area Agency on Aging so that you can go and find your local area agency on aging, and they generally have some type of fall prevention class, usually a matter of balance, um, which will give you the information about that too. Excuse me. <coughs> Um, talk with your doctor and pharmacist. And I should have put doctors on this slide. Many of us have more than one doctor, and many of our doctors are prescribing different medications. It's important that you get all of your medication from the same pharmacist. That way, they can keep an eye on what you're taking. Excuse me. and see if there are any drug interactions in the medications. Physicians don't always talk to one another. Specialists don't talk to your primary care physician. You're really the one responsible for bringing that information together. So make sure you always have an updated list of your medications. Go over it with your doctor and your pharmacist and keep that information with you at all times. And then take control. This is your life and you can prevent falls. And remember, you are in charge. You're in charge of whether you exercise, you're in charge of whether you ask for help, you're in charge of getting the right physician and, and discussing those things. And another thing to remember, if you ever have a hospital visit and you get medications added to your regimen, make sure that you understand upon discharge whether you continue your new regimen or go back to your old regimen. And you might even bring someone in with you to help understand those discharge um, instructions or call to your um, regular physician and ask them what to do. But remember, you're the one who's really in charge of the day-to-day -day, um, health of yourself. Now, remember, most falls are preventable. Don't stop going and doing. Don't stop going to church. Don't stop going to the senior center. Don't stop going to see your family and friends and to the movies. The more you stay home and the less activity you do, the weaker your bones and muscles become and the higher your risk for falling. And as you begin to feel more isolated from your family and friends, depression can set in. So remember to go out and do. And then check your space. In a couple of slides, we'll have some resources for you. And I've given you the link for the home assessment tool from the National Institutes of Health. Go through your home, or better yet, have a family member or a friend go through your home objectively looking at all of the places that may be a fall risk and do something about it. Then talk, discuss, and solve your issues when it comes to falls. If you can't talk to your family, talk to someone. Have a discussion, ask for solutions and then solve those problems together. And this is key. Report every fall to your doctor because falls happen for a reason. And if you don't know what the reason is, 
You cannot prevent future falls. Even if it's just a phone call to say, Dr. Smith, I had a fall today, I'm feeling fine, but I wanted to let you know. Because that will go into your medical chart and a pattern may come about. And if they ask you to come in, go in so they can do a exam. Also, follow through. So interesting, um, I met a person the other day and they said they were having some balance issues and said they had been through vestibular therapy. And I asked them if they were doing their exercises. And they said, oh, I walk and, and I do um, some sitter size. And I said, well, what about the exercises that the vestibular therapist gave you, the head turning and so forth? And this person had forgotten all about that. So make sure if you've given, been given an exercise program or a specific protocol to address your fall risk, follow through. Write it on your calendar. Put it next to your medications. Write it on the bathroom mirror and red lipstick. Whatever works for you. But do those things because they will help you um, prevent those future falls. All right, I have a couple of more questions um, here. If my father has Alzheimer's, can he still participate in a program? Some programs are designed for community dwelling adults with good cognitive skills. Um, I am not sure, but I think there is a program for people who have dementia. And I'm going to check on that, and we're going to put that link up on our resource page after this presentation is over. So come back and look for that answer. And then here's one. I have trouble with water in my ears. Is this important to tell my doctor? Absolutely. Our ears are like the level that tell our body where we are in space. So if we lean back, our ears can tell our brain and our feet and to make those adjustments. So if you're having trouble with hearing or with vision or any of those, Write those down so you don't forget if you had any dizziness or if you get up in the morning and you feel dizzy. That's a sign of low blood pressure, and you need to speak to your doctor about that because that can be a risk factor for falls. And here are some of the resources that we've given you. The first one is for the um, area agencies on aging. The second one is for a program very near and dear to my heart. It's called A Matter of Balance. Managing Concerns About Falls. And this program is available in most states and in British Columbia. And I encourage you to either contact your area agency on aging to see if they provide it or call Maine Health directly and they can probably tell you if they have it in your community and that's the link to their website. The third one is the National Council on Aging Healthy Programs. It also has information about a matter of balance and several other programs that are recommended by the National Council on Aging. And then the last one there is from the CDC, and it is the toolkit and the checklist for safety that you can use in your own home to see which places you need to check, and it gives you some great solutions. So I encourage you to utilize those resources. And thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions in the future, you can send them to us through the presentation. We will answer them within 72 hours. Thanks for your time today.